Welcome, 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 everybody. It is July 10th. As you can see, we are Zooming today. The club is still under construction, and apparently the air conditioning is not working. So for those of us in Green Valley, we're like, nah, we're going to just do Zoom, and that'll be much easier. <laughs> well, let's start off today. Uh, Todd has got a video to share with us. Todd, why don't you tell us about your video, and I will share that for everybody. All right. Well, this is just my uh, uh, video for my annual canoe trip. So, you know, it's designed really for the, the people on the trip. I'm not, you know, going to do anything else with it. So just a fun thing to, for them to have a memory. And so in years in the future, when I'm long and gone, uh, the kids can look at this and have fun memories of uh, having fun with grandpa. Excellent. All right. Let's see what we got.
What do we think of that? Looks like fun. What do you think of the use of the drone uh, in that video? Very smooth. Added. It definitely, it really was nice, that shot where you're kind of flying along the river and you can see the banks and the trees and everything. Just beautiful with the canoes going underneath. Um, I also love the music. Yeah, It really gave me a nice tranquil feeling in terms of the camping and everything else going on and everything. So, yeah, I like that a lot. Todd, Todd, if you had not done that, would anybody else have done anything? Um, as far as putting together a video or taking pictures? Any and all. Uh, my oldest son, Thaddeus, he takes pictures as well, but no one else does. Well, my guess is that nobody could have done anything as spectacular as what you did. <laughs> well, this was our 34th year for doing this, so, and I'm the one that's always taken the pictures, so I think they just... Uh, they're like, you know, grandpa's going to take care of this, so they don't even concern. What threw me off was my daughter was supposed to be on the trip and ended up canceling a day or so before. So I had all these great plans as far as concentrating just on the photography end of it. Um, but when she opted out of it, she she's my uh, she's a sous chef, so she was going to do all the cooking. And so then I ended up having to do all the all the cooking um, for the trip. And uh, that obviously takes time away from other things. How many days so, was that? Pardon me? How many days? Uh, four days. Four days. So the, the old still photographer wants to ask a question about the video. When 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 you were shooting some of the video, and there was action in the video, and it was a little bit herky-jerky. Was that because you were set at 30 frames per second? Um, I think that's because we're on the internet, because it isn't jerky. Okay. Like, I'm watching it. Okay. Well, let me ask this. Um, if, if, if you wanted to... I mean, I have by default, and I guess probably since, uh, since ever, I've had my phones all set at uh, 30 frames per second. What is the downside of shooting everything at 60? And would that help? Uh, my understanding is, one, it will take more memory on your phone to do it. The nice uh, nice part, though, about shooting at 60 frames per second, if you want to slow it down, it, it makes it a lot smoother slowing it down, shooting at 60 instead of 30. 30, you will get that jerkiness. Is that uh, for those who are... Uh, What's that? Yeah. We're going to let our guest Brian chime in today. Okay. No, uh, he's got it pretty pretty much right. Yeah, think about the uh, the old movies or most movies were shot at twenty four frames a second, so you get a more uh, more clarity and uh, more hyper realistic uh, at the higher frame rates. You know the one thing that. Um... There is some jerkiness in the video that I do see is when the people were going down canoeing. Yeah. Uh, that seemed like, the, and I'm not sure what that, were you cropping at all on that, Todd, or was that full frame? I think that's full frame, but I'd have to go back and look. Did you do I, any stabilization um, in post? I think so, Brian, but not 100% sure right now. That's another place that higher frame rates will help you out is post-production stabilizing. Uh, you get a better result. I'll go back and look at that to see if I uh, I stabilize it. I tend to, but I don't remember specifically. That's one of the other things that I've noticed, um, not not just with drone, but shooting any video. When when you're you're going from like a left to right or something like that, I seem to notice more jerkiness in it than uh, than going up or down the one one area that i would suggest with that and it's and i found that myself if you're panning really slowly like this you don't get a lot of that jerkiness if you're going really fast it's possible to get some camera movement going uh you know up and down as you're panning if you're not on a tripod so that 
were you just using your phone and then just following them down the river as they were going? Or that was you, from the drone. Where they were, where they were, you were pretty low on that shot. Was well, that, I had 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 it pretty low. Let me go back and check. which one are you? Which hang on, hang uh, on, let me share it. I'll show the you. rapids. Yeah, that 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 was um right here. That was shot with the GoPro. I mean, there's jerkiness. If I'm playing that slow, <laughs> you see how there's that jumpy going on, Todd? Yeah. The other thing I was going to suggest, too, just as a quick goodie, this is a good rule of thumb. Uh, whenever you're doing a shot and you've got video and you're editing it so that you like where the scene starts and the scene ends, if you add a transition like a dissolve, if you watch real slowly, I saw this, you're panning up with the camera. And so there's this bit of jerkiness that, that comes into the shot. So if I play it again, just a little bit, hang on, I'm going back. Here we go. See what I'm talking about there? Yeah. So just the thing that I've found is sometimes I'll get that something's going on, you know, I'm turning the camera or going down or whatever. I've got the shot perfectly edited, but then when I put the transition in, it includes some of that that I don't want. Just back it up half a half a second. If you've got a one second dissolve, you'll not you'll never see that again. So just as a thought. So back up the dissolve or the clip. Basically, shorten the clip by a, a half a second on that end. If there's there's some little jerkiness like that, and that'll help you a bunch. Okay. That's an interesting tip I've never heard. Well, we see it sometimes every once in a while. I've even, I've had it in a couple of mine videos where I'm editing it, and then there's just a little something that I don't like, and I'll I'll shorten up the clip just a little bit, and then it's nice and smooth and it looks good. So maybe you're turning the camera off or you're, you're, you're panning with something, and then you kind of go up high or down a little bit, and it, it's, it gets a little funny at the end with that dissolve. That's something that we can talk about, and we have a little uh, class again at the club. Your next trip, Todd, try using your drone for a handheld camera because it's got a fine little stabilizer built right into it. No, oh, that's an idea. I didn't think about that. Yeah, it would have it would have really looked nice. I would agree with Brian on that. You, you know, you could have been that low at the rocks and just shooting as they go by. Yep. Okay. Uh, does anybody you for your comments? Does anybody have anything else on that? Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I have heard it before. The question would maybe not even have occurred to me, but in critiquing or commenting on previous other people's videos, more than once, the question has, or the the comment has come up about would maybe like to have had some of the ambient sounds, whether it was the water or whether it was voices, even if it was uh, indistinguishable as, as to who was saying what, just just chatter among the, the friends, the relatives in this case. So um, obviously, Todd, when you go to the music, that, that was really nice, I thought. Um, but you made the decision to... Um, to just stick with music entirely. Am I right? That's correct, except for one little video clip when uh, Daniel was uh, doing the uh, tea dueling contest. Uh, I shot that with my GoPro. Um, I mean, it, it, I can understand that it gets real complicated when you're trying to do so much, so many different, so many different factors go into it. But um, I, re I remember somebody had had shot something in uh, Cuba and it it was a nice video, but the comments afterwards, there seemed to be a lot of, um, a lot of thought that some of the ambient sounds would have, would have added. You know, the, the, the one thing I would say about that, Joe, is I think it depends on what the ambient sound is. Does it add to the scene, which is, would be a positive to add it. The other goodie too, especially like for a lot of this, Todd shooting is outside. If he's getting some wind noise, yep. and then that 
I'd say, no, you don't want any of that. Right. Sherry Lee had one of her videos that we showed a couple of weeks ago where she, there was something, I can't remember. Was it Scotland you were at? Somewhere like that. Yeah, and it was in Edinburgh. Were, and there was, it was real windy and she had, she had some of that wind noise and then she redid it, knocked that wind noise out. It made it so much better. So um, I think if it, as long as the ambient sound helps, great. If it's deterring from what the, the story you're trying to tell, then maybe you say, okay, I don't really need it. I don't, personally on Todd's video, I don't, it didn't bother me that, you know, there was noise, ambient noise in there. So, I mean, if it, if it, there's that tranquilness of the music. So if the ambient is yelling and screaming, maybe that disrupts the mood. You'd have to, you could always do it with, and then as you're, editing then take it out if you don't like it everybody here should know the term foley yes they don't <laughs> so what is that ryan and how do you spell it f-o-l-e-y go ahead brian it's called putting in the sound after the fact there's entire movies where no sound came from the, the sound stage where they were shooting it. It was all dubbed in by actors reading the script in a studio afterwards. Uh, okay, the, the classic example, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, the guy's going along on a broom and the guy behind him with the two coconuts making the horse clop clop noise. That's Foley. Susan and I used it all the time because the the overwhelming sound of wind going across your microphone, yes, you can tone it down, tone it down, tone it down. Well, why not just take it out altogether and dub in some reasonable wind noise instead? It's, it's a lot easier, a lot less frustrating. On the Camera Club website, in the multimedia section, assets, you will find a link to a place called freesound.org. And type in any kind of sound you want to think of, and there's free sound clips on there. You need to create an account. Doesn't cost you anything. We've never gotten, um, you know, ads from them or anything. You can donate sound to it. You can download sound to it, and it's amazing what you can find on there. So that's what I did. Did I show the wedding? Grace, Grace, turn your sound up. We can barely hear you. Okay. Or get closer to the mic. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is that better? That's better. A little. A little bit. A little bit. Um, wait, the microphone is over here on my laptop. Well, there you go. Uh, okay. Uh, so um, I think I showed the wedding video that I did in uh, Playa del Carmen down in Mexico. Um, it was on the beach. I don't recall seeing that. You don't recall seeing that? No. Actually, I have it on a DVD, so I'm not even sure I can show it to you. Uh, okay. But the, but the, but to what Ryan's talking about, it was in the late afternoon. It was on the beach. The The waves lapping were too loud. Um, I took those off and put uh, a softer uh, wave um, beach sound on. Uh, they, I was too far away. I was using an actual video camera at the time. I was too far away to be able to get their vows. So I took them in a, in a room the next day and they reread their vows. And then I did have to lip sync it, uh, but I managed to do that. But it was a matter of having to put in the sound after the fact because I couldn't use what was being uh, shot at the time. That's a great example. That's the the beauty of you can sit there and if something isn't working when you recorded it live, go back later when you're editing and add in some of these sound effects like Brian's talking about or waves, wind, whatever it is, and you can make something uh enhance it even that much more so i'd say good job on that okay uh sherry lee you have got a video for us why don't you tell us about your video 
Um, so this uh, was when the next part of our Scotland and Ireland trip. Um, and this is when we joined the group that we were traveling with. Um, I had some issues with it, so I don't want to talk a lot about it because I want to see what you guys, um, I'm very much wanting your feedback. Uh, I, one thing that I did was I was having some fun trying some new things that I hadn't done before. And so I've added some different effects in uh, that part. I was pretty excited about. Um, so I'm anyway, I'm looking forward to uh, getting some critiques and uh, seeing what I can do. There's one spot where uh, if anybody knows how to can help me with um, it's during a distillery tour and the lighting behind the guy, there's like this rectangle, which is light coming through a window. Um, and I tried a bunch of different things to try and get rid of that. And I wasn't able to, so to, I wasn't able to figure it out. So um, I'm that too, I'd be interested in some um, suggestions. Um, okay. Well, well, let's get, let's give it a look and then we will see what everybody thinks. All right. Our gate one tour begins with our wonderful group. Our fabulous guide, Hillary, who filled our heads with current and past stories. And amazing driver, Jim, who kept us safe and amused during our long bus rides. After checking in, we wandered near our hotel. We were surprised to find giraffes and loved the impromptu bagpipes. And the city tour begins, including the Royal Mile. It's a bit of a tight, tight corner there. You've done it, done it before, Ian. Of the building, the construction of the new town of Edinburgh. New Calton Cemetery. Edinburgh Castle. Now, here's my question. What age was that building that was, I said, was the oldest? As we climbed Castle Hill, we walked in the footsteps of soldiers, kings, queens, and even the odd pirate or two. The crown jewels were in residence, and we joined the long line to see them. No stopping to admire, no photos allowed. Now, for a Scotch whiskey experience. The further apart these lines are and the faster they move, that indicates a heavier body of whiskey. How does it feel in your mouth? Does it feel oily? Does it feel watery? That's really the way to determine. And amazing food. Exciting day. Heading to the highlands. Sure glad I have my heavy winter coat. First stop near Perth, a famous palace, crowning place of Scottish kings, Macbeth, Robert the Bruce, and Charles II, to name a few, and the site of the Stone of Schoon. Schoon breathes history like nowhere else in Scotland. The country house we saw is an elegant 19th century home built as the seat of the Earls of Mansfield. It replaced the famous Schoon Abbey, which was destroyed by religious reformers in 1559. Next up, a morning shot of whiskey at Lindor's Abbey. My name's Michael, um, and I'll be your guide. We also are blessed that we have an amazing history, um, and, and the history here goes back to 1191. But this is the first recorded place of whiskey being made in Scotland. Learning about the process of making whiskey. 
Think three years and a day. And sampling ingredients. And yes, I have now developed a taste for the amazing Scottish whiskey. So that, that liquid gets put in casks and gets put in casks for three years in one day. So taste the whiskey in front of you, smell it, taste it, enjoy it. Continuing north to our hotel in Aviamor. This is a view from our hotel room window. Back on the bus. Through Inverness. To visit the Isle of Skye. The Isle of Skye is the largest and northernmost part of the major inner islands of Scotland. Sky dates back to the age of dinosaurs. In fact, dinosaurs' footprints have been found on one of the shores. Dunvegan Castle, seat of Clan MacLeod since the 13th century. Clan MacLeod and Clan MacDonald were the most powerful clans of Sky, and they were bitter rivals. The island was held by Donald MacDonald from 1389 to 1401. The grounds at Clan MacDonald are beautiful. I was fascinated by the monkey puzzle tree. Onward to Loch Ness. We got Harry Cruz, we got Harry Cruz. Oh, Harry Cruz. Now in search of Nessie. And we found her! And here we are, on the road again. Absolutely stunning vistas, in spite of the rain, along the West Highland Way, Scotland's most famous trail. It's 96 miles long. Stopping at the bonny banks of Loch Lomond for a boat ride and interesting tales. Just last year we had a documentary on telly about Rob Roy. Gave a slightly different portrayal of the man. Uh, he was a bit of a rogue to say the least. He was a cattle thief of some renown. He apparently never turned up for battle uh, when he promised he would. Here's a quick view of our wonderful and entertaining group before we disembark. To continue, on to Glasgow. And I'm going to try and get you into some very special places. I ask you to please put on your seatbelts, okay? You see the old bridge over the River Kelvin. The old stone bridge is still there, and above that is the university. These buildings are all lit up at night time, and the bells of the great university ring, rings out on the hour on the half hour. So this is Kelvin Grove Museum. Kelvin Grove Museum was refurbished and reopened in 2006. Glasgow Cathedral, also known as St. Mungo Cathedral, is the oldest in mainland Scotland. Our storyteller guide enthralls us with tales of St. Mungo. But the king here is pagan. Huge king. Can you be a king? Can you come forward? This powerful man is the king of this area. So Hydrakal is the king. Hydrakal. But he had a beautiful queen called Langwareth. Ma'am, can you pretend you're the queen? <laughs> That's your husband. 
So she became a Christian thanks to you. The strongest man is with the king. With the king. And they're out there hunting in the forest and the king is very happy. And the king sees the gold ring on the soldier's finger. The very ring the king had given the queen. Oh. Was on the oh. <laughs> exactly what he thought. And he picks up the ring with astonishment and said, if this Christian God is so powerful that the fish had swallowed the ring that he'd thrown with anger into the river and from its own mouth it's back to my table, he must be a powerful God. I will declare myself a Christian. Oh, nice. yeah. And the ring is on the queen's finger. They all live happily ever after. We have a saying in Scotland, in Glasgow, forgive me, Where's the bird? It never flew. Where is the tree? It never grew. Where's the fish? It never swam. And where is the bell? It never rang. Look up at the lamp. It's the coat of arms of Glasgow. Everywhere in this city, those symbols are everywhere. St. Mungo is the founder and patron saint of the city of Glasgow. The bird, tree, bell, and fish refer to his four miracles which are represented in the city's coat of arms. Afternoon free time. Outside laundry. Visit a fascinating tenement house. A cool pub with good whiskey. And a great meal. Golfer's Haven, en route to a ferry for North Ireland. These are real golfers. And me, pretending. Ferry time. We're on the boat heading to Belfast. See you there in the next episode. Okay. What do we think of that? I'd like to see that replayed at the club so we can see it on the regular TV. Because <laughs> at least in my internet connection, it was a lot of it wasn't very visible and was breaking up a lot. It was for me too. It was hard to watch it on yes. uh, on Zoom because it's not like that. We it played fine we here. We have crummy. Yeah, it played fine we here. We have crummy oh, satellite here. Okay. Yeah. yeah no, no. Hey, Brian and Joe, what what internet service do you have? Verizon. Same here, Verizon. Yes. As a matter of fact, um, my wife just uh, plugged in a new uh, Verizon uh, modem. It's called a Gateway. You've seen it advertised. She just plugged it in about two hours ago. But either way, um, yeah, it played well. And Sherry Lee, I, 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 I haven't talked with you much over, you know, since I've joined. But I just wonder if you might think of this as your best uh, production yet. I did not think this was my best production yet. Thank you, though, for saying that. Well, I ha I thought there were so many things, the narration, the music, the timing. Uh, I just I just thought there were a lot of things that were were, were very nice. And um, I was I was noticing that your the music you used and the, the volume level and how we could I could always hear you and understand you. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is Jim. You really caught the highlights of that area. It brought me way back. We did the motorcycling of that whole area and hit a lot of those places, but I never was able to stop and listen to the people like you did. It's beautiful. Thank you. I would say one of the things, Sherry Lee, that, uh, and maybe it's just because of the connection here, I didn't care for the spinning transitions too much. Uh, it just kind of, to me, played with my mind and then wasn't a smooth transition into the next clip or video, whatever you were doing. I don't know if you can slow those down, if there's any way to do that, or is only just you put it in and it is what it is. It definitely has um, 
features, like it's got this whole long line of different ways that you can adjust it. And I tried to adjust it some and it just really went wonky. So I left it as it came. Yeah, I mean, it's a personal uh, thing. I just, for yeah. me, I didn't, I found it more distracting. Okay. You know, the one, uh, a couple of quick things for you, Sherry Lee. The, if you had not told me about the part with the distillery where the the uh, sun is behind the guy, yeah, it never would. It ne it didn't bother me. Uh, really, there's nothing you can do. I'm I'm assuming that that's window light that's coming in that's exposing behind him, and there's not a darn thing you can do about it. But it didn't distract me in that section from uh, the video. So. I think you're fine with that. It is what it is. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. So I don't know that I would worry about it. Uh, it seemed like in the beginning, uh, I, maybe the first couple of minutes, I was thinking that there was a lot of information that was being given, and it seemed very rushed to me, meaning I'm trying to look at the pictures and the video, and I'm listening to you, and it was almost like a machine gun pace. Then I'd say the the last two thirds you you slowed down a little bit and you you had a little bit more spacing so I thought that was nice. So um, as you're looking at that again, maybe I don't know what you would do to either include a little bit more content, video, or skills to just slow down that first third. It just seemed very very rushed. Okay. So something to think about. Thank you. Oh, you bet. Um, what does anybody else think of of uh, the video? Any well, idea on that on that window thing? I I didn't even notice the uh, bright window. So, <laughs> right. I, yeah, I don't fine. Yeah, I don't think it's an issue at all. I didn't notice. I need to leave. So okay. I need to That's leave. Cool. So we'll see. You again. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, uh, the other. Quickly, the, uh, oh, go ahead, Brian. The uh, bit with the light behind the guy's head, yeah, distracting. Uh, depending on the software you're using, there is a way to tone that down. But that said, that's one of the hazards of documentary style uh, filmmaking. Sometimes you just can't do anything about it because you can't, you know, change the camera angle and ask him to do it again. <laughs> Technically, uh, I have to agree with Todd. Did not like that that spinny do something else. Okay. <laughs> and you already know I'm going to say this. I'm not a fan of the little animations being added in. That takes a lot of time to yeah. do it seamlessly to work. It looks good. And that's okay. For a first effort, fine. But go back and do it and get it done right. Um, let's see. What else? Your fonts, that uh, that bicolored uh, script stuff, I had a heck of a time reading that. Um, we showed at one point a short video on the use of fonts by Larry Jordan, and I think you can still get it off of his website. Um, script style fonts are very, very hard. To, to get one that is easily readable, especially on the fly. If they're not on there long enough for it to figure out what in the heck does that say, then you need a different font. And I really think you need a different font there. Um, saw a couple of spots where you were doing narration on a moving bus, uh, you know, looking out the window where the road noise overwhelmed what you were saying. I would go back and look at those as a perfect opportunity to practice uh, Foley style sound. Take the noise out altogether, add in some artificial road noise, and recreate the narration right there in, at your desk at home. Um, yeah, that's, that's about all I wrote down. But yep, you're you're still coming along. I uh, enjoyed uh, seeing some of that stuff. Did you? You did, I take it you didn't have an opportunity. You weren't there when they were doing the Edinburgh uh, military tattoo, were you? No. Uh, no. That, that's yeah. a lot of fun. 
Yeah, I think that was after after the fact. In fact, we barely made it. The the jewels or the, you know the crown that left like a couple days after we were there to go to wherever it was going to next. Um, but uh, the crown jewels. But we didn't. Uh, yeah, I I heard about the the tattoo thing. Yeah, it's world famous. But, yeah, but uh, we weren't there for it. Um. I didn't so much mind the little the little star transition that, that came in, in and out. I mean, if Spielberg can do it in Raiders of the Lost Ark, you can do it in yours. You did one transition. I only saw you do it once, and it's not something that I think should be overdone, that I thought was very interesting. You're on the bus, and you kind of zoomed into and then flipped and zoomed back, and you were looking at yourself. Yeah. That one, I thought that was really interesting. Um, nice job with that. Thanks. Yeah, uh, on on some of these these transitions, you know, just because you've got a a menu that scrolls on for page and page and page about different transitions, just because you got them doesn't mean you have to use them. <laughs> and and you know, you, you, those of you that have listened to me in the past know that uh, if it's not a a jump or a fade, uh, I'm not inclined to use it most of the time. <laughs> yep. So with this trip, it was uh, a predominantly a bus trip. And there really wasn't much for free time. We were on the bus for hours and hours. <laughs> That's tough. And we would have stops that were never long enough, so it felt really rushed. And it's... It's not a company that we will travel with again oh. um, because it was, I mean, some people may really like sitting on a bus for hours and hours. We're not one of them. And so I thought, what can I do in retelling this story to have it be fun? And I needed to make it fun for me because it was actually a painful trip. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's, that's why I wanted to put in all the little animation and the fairy and the crowns. And it was like, I needed to do something fun <laughs> out of this for myself. <laughs> and, um, and that's why I needed to play with some of these things. So uh, that's why I don't feel like this was one of my best um, things for all these reasons, Brian, that you're <laughs> pointing out because I didn't I'll also look at it this way, you know, who are you making the film for? Are you making it for me or are you making it for you, ultimately? Yeah, yeah so, I'm making you know, it for me. Yeah. From a technical viewpoint, those would be my my changes. From yeah. a personal viewpoint, looking at it from your direction, have a ball. <laughs> so a, a couple of things I, to piggyback off of, Brian. Um, yeah. Basically, I think that the rule for fonts is with video, it's sans serif, period. Um, and that uh, no serifs, no no other types, and Ty, uh, I don't know, Kevin may uh, disagree or not. And the other thing is you probably figured out already that shots through the window don't really go well. Uh, but I there were some of them that went better than others, and I think... The ones that went better than others were when you were focusing on something in the distance. They're more sharp uh, than flashing by real fast. Uh, so, and I'm sure you'll be on other trips and uh, yeah, you will probably not do as much of that. And well, what, and again, on a long bus ride. <laughs> yeah, part of why, what I wanted to be able to do was have it do the zoom streaks. And I, watched a lot of videos and I watched uh, um, of uh, training videos with my from my software to try and figure out. So I, I tried doing some ghosting stuff and, and that just wasn't working. And so that's why I went into the fast motion. But because we spent so much time on the bus, I just felt like I had to include <laughs> these speed things of, you know, I mean, we were just going by. And so, so that that was intentional. Um, 
to just represent, you know, except I would have really liked to have more of the, I, I would have liked to have had lines going, you know, speed lines going through it, but I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I do have one. Oh, go ahead, Todd. I was just going to say, as far as the fonts were concerned, I, I agree with Brian and Grace. They were a little bit difficult to read and everything. The other thing, though, that I found distracting was when you were bringing them in across the screen. So I'm trying to read the font, but then I can't focus on the image in the background, and then poof, it was gone. So I didn't even really, maybe it was because of the font style, I didn't really get to read what it was saying. Mm -hmm. And then look look at the image. So maybe having it a little more static and just fade in and fade out, uh, so you can still see what the image was, and it wouldn't be as distracting as coming in from one side to the other. But again, it's all a matter of personal preference. Thank you. I've got one more quick goodie for you too, Sherry Lee. Just uh, at the beginning, the audio, your narration, got a little distorted. And I don't know if you are somehow using some sort of filter or processing that sound. Now, at, at the, the back half, I didn't notice it as bad. Um, did you have you noticed that or not? I did notice that I was really struggling with it. Um, I, I used Audacity for all of it, but all of it, uh, the very first couple seconds that I had done separately. Okay. And then the rest of it, uh, I had done a couple, you know, a couple days earlier, and I, I was baffled. I don't really know why it did that, and I, I think I'm going to go in and redo that section, um, and hopefully it'll. <laughs> yeah, it just, yeah, it sounded a little muddy or a little uh, did, distorted, yeah. and yeah. I, I love the idea of going back and just saying, okay. I'm just going to recut that audio and put it in fresh and clean. And the other thing you might do too is then see how that sounds. And if it sounds as good as it does at the back end, then I think you're going to be really good. So give that a try and see what happens. Thanks. Yeah. You bet. All right. Well, we got time for one more video. This is one of mine. Uh, this is another part of my little trip. Uh, a few weeks ago up to Arizona, northern Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado. And this is, there's an area called uh, Bistai Wilderness that's south of Farmington. Uh, very neat area in New Mexico. Uh, very neat area. It's very remote. There's no trails. And I also have, I'm not going to show it because we're out of time too, but uh Arlene had done one from Bistai from a couple of years ago she had shared with the group. And it's interesting to see what her perspective of the park is versus my perspective. So anyway, uh, let's take a look at this. It's a Oh, go ahead, Brian. Oh, oh, you're... <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's take a look at this. It's only a couple minutes long.
Okay, there you go. Well, that was cool. Well, thank you. <laughs> was I thought there was a drone shot in there. Yeah. No, the uh, there was some slight up and down movement that gave it away. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you know the. Yeah. I just got this gimbal, and this is the first trip that I've used it on, and. By the end of the trip, I was better at it. But to start, I would agree with Brian. There was that little bit of bouncy bounce. Mm -hmm. And I ran it through stabilizer to see if I could minimize some of that. And I really couldn't. So I just left it as is and away we go. But yes, I would love to have brought the drone out there and shot some of that stuff because it would have been so much better. Yeah, it's BLM. You're allowed to fly. and, and I know. All BLM areas. Yeah, but I'm not going to take the Phantom out there. That's a little bit much to backpack out. <laughs> well, it's really from the parking lot out to that area that you are is only a couple miles. Yeah, but I'm also old, and I'm going to put batteries and everything else on my back along with everything else. <laughs> this isn't a Mavic. <laughs> Can't fly from the parking lot? You know you're legally supposed to be able to see that thing. Well, yeah, I know that, but well, well, there's no way in hell I'm flying out two miles uh, at ten feet to get a shot. So, no, I would be much better off. See, that's why I need to just go and buy a Mavic and then have that for these little trips. Uh, it would be much easier to put in a backpack and away you it go. Yeah, but the gimbal, I was surprised. The gimbal did a nice job on a bunch of that stuff. I, I did see, and again, it just might be because of the internet connection, when you were panning the one, it was, at least on my screen, was really jerky. I don't know if it was the same for others. It's. I think it's the internet. There's, so. there's always going to be an issue with, with pans like that. Uh, I was thinking on, on, on some of those, uh, like, like one of them in particular, there was a central element, a, a little hoodoo there, and you panned across it. That would have been an interesting one to keep the camera pointed at the hoodoo and then going around and keeping it pointed at the hoodoo. There, it would have, um, I think that would have been an interesting shot. Well, you know, the, and I would agree. I, uh, I think part of that is the learning aspect of what is what you're capable with something like that. And I know they've got like a tracking focus thing where you can say, okay, here's my subject keep that in the center and then as I move around it will stay in the center um and as I do more stuff like this and try it I'll definitely get better I like I said I know by the end of the trip I was more conscious of not being so bouncy up and down with the gimbal uh the other thing that I did find which was interesting holding the gimbal up like this or with cuz I would use two hands to try to be as steady as I could when I went upside down with it and I was just holding it by my fingertips with the handle, I found I was smoother. So I think maybe just something about that with the way the weight is, the the phone is lower with the gimbal being upside down, that I'm I'm smoother. So anyway, I'm learning some tricks, which is a good thing. So were you using just the the video on the phone or were you using another software? No, it's just the it's just the uh the iPhone's video. So I did not use the DJI software. I found that it does a pretty damn nice job. And and here's another one, you know what I'm gonna say. Uh you had some really nice photographs in there. So why put Pan in or zoom in and out motion on them. Yeah, that's me. I thought, I thought it was distracting. Yeah. Well, the one thing I would say that I do try to do with that is I am making it a very slight movement. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not zooming in super fast, super hard. Um, so that I still retain some of that motion. You know, the thing I could do, and it would be interesting to see, is just go ahead and take all that out, just leave the photo up, these photos up. And then see what you think. I'd be interested. I'll, you know, what I'll do is I'll do that and send it to you. Okay. And then see what you think. I just send me both. Yeah, definitely. 
I, I've just always been that motion thing to me is uh, the still photographer in me saying, I would like to add some life to these. So just by adding some slight movement, I think just gives it some interest. So, yeah, you know. And, and see, I've got the opposite viewpoint. The good photography is its own interest. Sure. Uh, and we generally use motion to draw attention to something in particular in there that we really want to emphasize. Uh, but if there's nothing in particular, just enjoy the photo. Personal, personal sure. preference. Sure. Oh, I'm not worried. I won't stop doing it. <laughs> I'm like Sherry Lee with the crazy dissolves. She's got the crazy dissolves. I've got the motion in my still photos. So did you use the, the anything with the cinematic uh, part of uh, the camera feature? I did do that a couple of times uh, just as an experiment. I don't know that I've gotten to that point of the trip yet where I've shot some of that, but I only did it a few times. I was, I was, like I said, I was really happy with the way that the cameras just shot regular and, you know, with the gimbal, it just, it made it nice to add some motion. Uh, and also even holding the camera still, you know, normally before this, if I had my phone and I would just do like a pan. Well, you still have a little bit of this going on. Well, the gimbal was nice because it did smooth everything out just if I was uh, panning like that. So I was very impressed with that. I I think the combination of the gimbal and the phone, I mean, boy, it, if you're looking to shoot both stills and video and you don't want to lug along a video camera, a still camera, a drone, all that other stuff, uh, it, it really that's this this trip was that way. I pretty much shot ninety eight percent with the phone, and and I think this class is and this group is part of why I did that, just because of wanting to try to incorporate more video into my still photography. So anyway, you're not nice. I mean, my 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 gimbal out. We've got the summer games coming up again, so I'm. And my I I need a lot of practice because my uh, gimbal tends to want to take over and and do wonky things. So I need yeah. have a lot of practice. But I use, also have Filmic Pro, um, which is a video a software for the phone that allows you to manually do everything. Oh, really? Yeah. You set your focus. Set your uh, uh, set exposure, set film right, all of it, but it's not. It, and it maybe cost me under twenty dollars, I think, for the for the software. Well, it's definitely good to know. I mean, going oh, through. Out, yeah, and they bought out Double Take, which uh, uh, allows you to film with two cameras at the same time. Oh wow. <laughs> It was fun to use. Uh, Joe was uh, in the room when I was practicing. When I just got it, and I said, "You know, here you can you can shoot wide angle and and telephoto at the same time hmm. with two distinct uh, files." I'd like to revisit that. <laughs> I don't know if it's another demonstration or what. Um, I had forgotten about that, Grace and. When you we talked about it, you know, since since the first time, but uh, yeah, I, I I did I did that w w when Joe was in the room, um, and then I did it again with Holly, where she was. I had the I had the um, phone on a just a small tripod, I believe, and I had one one camera facing her and the selfie facing me. So we were we were shooting both of us at the same time, huh. having a conversation. Yeah. Um, anyway, we were just playing around. Well, I never did anything else with it, but. I was gonna say, it sounds interesting. It's nice to have uh, knowing your equipment and having options of things that you can do certainly makes you better as a photographer or video person. So, yeah. All right. 
Does anybody have anything else before I wrap it up today? No, I just want to say that uh, their video was really cool and everything inspires me to uh, want to go and take the photos that I did when I went there because I didn't know the place until Arlene showed her video and I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. The other place that's up there that I, I tried to go to um, in August of last year, but the rains prevented me from doing it, is called the Alien Throne. Are you familiar with that? That's at Vistai? It's uh, it's east of Vistai. Okay. You, you, you have to come in from the other main highway. I This is the first time I've been there, so I was very impressed, and I definitely want to go back again now knowing what I know uh, about the place. And there's some areas that we didn't, in that area, that we did not get to see some of the formations. So. Uh, Definitely. Well, I think that's part of the fun, too, of, of going on a trip like that is you go check out some of these things and having our group, we have people that travel and we're seeing stuff in areas, which makes it great uh, to inspire us to go to other places that we don't know about. So it's definitely fun. Yes. Yeah. Well, we'll have to work on that. <laughs> it's on my list. I've tried to get there a couple of times, but something's always my, my truck broke down the one time and that screwed me up. And then this time it was, it was all the rain that just all the roads were, uh, yeah. you know, the washes were flooded. And I'm like, I'm not going to go back in there. You know, even though I have four wheel drive, I was by myself. So I was like, yeah, well, it's probably just as well. <laughs> yeah. Till next time. That's right. All right, everybody. Well, we will try this again in two weeks on the 24th. I don't know if we will be at the club or not uh, with the construction. Hopefully, if things are done or very close to being done, then we can meet at the club. Much rather do that than just do the Zoom only. But if it's still a, a mess and there's still stuff going on, then we'll just do Zoom. But I'll, I'll let everybody know and uh, we'll take it from there. All right. I hope everybody has a great week. Get out and shoot. I'm looking forward to seeing what everybody does in a couple of weeks. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.